Okay, hello everyone, this is Mr. Rob Ronan here again, and today I'm here for my breakdown on Hawks again. Just because the first time I did this, you could barely hear me. Um, so this will be the same as my first one, so if you've already watched that, don't feel obligated to watch this one. But anyways, let's get into his breakdown. So in these videos, I'm going to just cover uh, all of his buttons, what they're going to be used for, um, how you should play him, and then in the second half I'll get to his combos and what you can do for that. So, let's get into his buttons then. So his regular attack string is a three-hitting attack string. In, um, in the air as well, it's a three-button attack string, has some multi-hits. You're essentially never going to do the last hit of the attack string, because um, you can't really get much off of it except for plus ultras. So unless you're doing combos into plus ultra, you're basically never going to um, do the full string, because you can't get anything off of it. His yellow attacks are pretty good. This one is a double-hitting one that leaves the opponent spinning for a long time before they fall onto the ground, which means you have a long time to cancel into other quirk buttons. Like, even if you do it really late, you can still get buttons off of it. See, like, I did that late and it's still going to hit them. And, obviously, since you can cancel them to other buttons, you can use them both as um, combo extenders. So see, that was a, a basic bread and butter combo, and he used both of the yellow attacks. His yeah, yellow attacks, another multi-hit attack, you can cancel it into other buttons. So yeah, pretty basic yellow attacks. His red attack, uh, it has some decent range, but it's a little bit slow, and it's very obvious when he's coming because he's bright red for ages. And But at least you can get combos off of it, so you know, you can get some decent damage with zero dash cancels. And it also, um, if you're facing the wall, it'll wall splat. Which is unusual, so... So you can get some uh, more easily extended combos that way, which is... which is handy. Okay, so that's his regular buttons. Another quick note, um, on his dash, when he does it in the air, he can actually fly around and glide, which is a, a pretty fun move. And when he's gliding, uh, he actually has access to a new move that he doesn't usually have, which is his Quirk 1. So while he's like steering and stuff and doing a glide, he has these projectiles that he can launch out, which are just really good for um, like when he's flying, because they come out almost instantly. So they're really good for like catching the opponent off guard, and they also like guarantee his entrance. So if the opponent's blocking because they know I'm flying around, maybe trying to do a, like a button or something, and if I'm flying around and I do these, they guarantee me pressing a button because I can press it from over here and it'll launch those projectiles out. So they have to block those, and then they have to block my combo that comes after it and might break their guard. So yeah, that's, those are really good tools. But now let's get into his quirk buttons. So his quirk one is this um, kind of projectile luck move. It does about 2,100 damage, but you can actually mash the button to get a bit more. Uh, this move I wouldn't say is a zoning tool, because as you can see here, it doesn't actually reach full screen. It it's kind of has the same range as Jiro's projectile, so it's more of like a poke tool, like when you're a bit, when you're around this distance and you don't want to go in and press a button, because you know, you can be easily sidestepped and punished in this game if you press a button. Like if they do a sidestep and you miss your button, you know, you're basically dead. But um, yeah, this move like lets you do something other than press buttons at this range and it's pretty safe. And because there's so many hits, if you see that they hit, just do a dash cancel and go for a combo. you see that they hit, and then you can get some nice damage off of your um, projectile very easily from hit confirming. And obviously the move is the same in the air as well, and yeah, same applies if you see it hit, dash cancel, going for a combo. There we go. Okay, um, this move, uh, just another quick note on it, is because you can dash cancel it and it does a lot of damage, you're going to be using it in most of your combos, so whether you're on the ground and you're doing a combo like this, and you can also use it in the air to do basically the same thing. And it's a damaging way to add, a good way of adding damage into your combos. Okay, so now for his Tilt Quirk one, it's a little more unusual and interesting of a move. So he, he launches out these feathers that like sweep left and right, and then at a certain point, if they're in the right range, they, they will hit the opponent. But as you can see, they do like basically no damage, like 200 is like nothing, they do. <laughs> so little damage that it's not their point. So the point of these moves is actually because they're very slow projectile and I can run around while they are out. And the point of slow projectiles is that they are very plus on block and they're really good for pressure. So if I throw these out, I can move while they're still out so I can do other things while it's out. So if these are going out, the opponent has to be scared of getting hit by these because if they get hit by them, like I can actually get a combo off of it. 
So the opponent has to respect these when I throw them out, and they have a really large hitbox. Like, they swoop around a lot of the screen, they're quite wide. So there's a lot of screen that gets covered up, and, and you can throw multiple of these at a time. So if you're doing something like this, the opponent has to respect all of these projectiles that you're throwing out, because if they don't, well, like I said, they're going to get hit by a combo. And obviously you don't want to do that. <laughs> but that means that if they are trying to respect these and like block them, you have a lot of time to go in and press other buttons. You can press buttons before they can, because you can move before the move even hits. So that's basically the definition of plus on block. You can move before they can. So if I throw these out and the opponent wants to block them, I can run up and do my red attack if they think they're going to get hit by them, and then they actually don't. So that um, leaves some good mix-ups there. Um, if they are in range to get hit by them, I can still do the red attack, and then they'll block it and then get like the red attack, go after them. That was a bit bad timing there, but... You get the point. Um, and also, you can just run in and press buttons. Um, and depending on how well you time it, there's basically no gap in between the time that you hit them and the, those buttons hit them. So you can go in for your pressure, because Hulk actually has some pretty decent pressure. So then these are a good way of, um, of in, uh, enforcing it. So if they're scared of this from a distance, you know, I charge in, do some combos. I can almost break their guard just because they blocked my projectiles. So, yeah, some scary stuff. And also, if the opponent's running around or, like, doing any side steps or anything, because these have such a sweeping nature, a lot of the time they catch the opponent um, running around because they kind of swoop behind them. Obviously, that's not working real well uh, against AI because it's running, like, sideways. But, you know, a lot of the time if the opponent does a side step or anything, like, uh, in your pressure or like anything except for like standing still and blocking, these are often going to hit them because they have such huge swooping hitboxes. So yeah, that's basically the essence of those. And basically, literally any time after you finish your doing your combo, like after you end your combo in this Quark 2 move, you're going to throw out one of these, and then you can go back into your opponent for free, because if they recover, um, my opponent is not on recover right now, but if I... I so this was a full combo, and I hit them with a combo. I throw these out, now the opponent has to be scared of them. If they recover the other way, they might have hit them, they might not. It's just like the unknown that is scary. So they have to... you can enforce your pressure a lot. So anytime you get the knockdown with this Quark 2 move, throw out these feathers, you can throw out one, you can even throw out two to scare them. So yeah, scary stuff. Now here's Quark 2. Um, I basically just showed it to you then, and you've seen me use it in combos. That's its only only use is as a combo ender. You can't dash cancel to get anything after it. Um, it doesn't have any properties in the neutral, like, it won't dodge anything, it's not fast, it's very unsafe. So it's just your damaging combo ender that you're gonna use. Um, you can actually use supports to extend off of it a lot of the time. Oops, not if you time it like that. Let's say if I do something like, oops, just something simple, like, two hits into that into this, and when he gets on them, if I call out Rapa, and uh, I don't suck, it'll actually be, it's actually pretty easy to um, combo off of it using a support like Rapa. And that was just a simple combo, I'll show you some more damaging and better ones later on. But as you can see there, easy to combo off of, that was zero dash cancels, 10,000 damage. Okay, um, for his Tilt Quark 2, this is this unusual um, flight move. It kind of reminds me of Gran Torino's um, Tilt Quark 1. So he can choose a direction the first part goes in, like I can either do it sideways or like straight towards the opponent. But the second hit will always go straight towards the opponent, and it's really good like if you're at a distance. Maybe if you dodge one of Toga's projectiles, or like anyone's projectile, you dodge it and then punish them with this. It's a really good space control move to get in on the opponent, because, and if they do block it, like, you can do something like dash cancel to try and, um, bait their punish. And, yeah. But one of the main uses of this move, or actually has two good uses, so one of them is that you can actually cancel the move into other quirk buttons. So, if, see if I hit him with this move, I can cancel it into his quirk one feather toss. I can actually cancel it so early, I can cancel it before the move even comes out, so see if, even if I'm in his phase, and I do it. Like, I can do it before it, he even hits the opponent, I can cancel it into there. So you can kind of fake the opponent out and go into a different quirk move. So a lot of the time, 
even like if I'm on block, I can actually throw out these um these feathers in a way that'll hit the opponent. Because he gets like launched back and then I can throw those out. So um that also means that he can use it with combo. So if I do two hits into that and then cancel it into the Quark on projectiles, that's a lot of damage and I haven't done my dash cancel yet. So you add it into your combos to add some good damage. Oopsie, messed that up. Let me try one more time. You see that was just two dash cancels and it's gonna be some pretty good damage. So yeah. But one of the main uses of this moves, move is against projectiles. And Bakugo uh, isn't the greatest example, but this is a projectile. But this move actually has projectile immunity. So if I do this, as you can see, he completely negated the projectile. He didn't even get um he didn't like take any chip damage from it. He completely went through the move. So if you think that anyone's gonna do a projectile, you can do this and oopsie. If you don't time it poorly like I do. If you don't time it bad, you can go straight through projectiles. Oh my goodness. Okay, this is fun. Oh my god. I did it completely easily before. It's usually not that hard. And then because you don't get hit by the other ones, you can punish them with that as well. And also the second hit as well. will go through projectiles. So if I do something like... As you saw that one like, negated him as well. Sometimes it acts a bit weird, especially with Bakugo, since it's not a real projectile, it kind of stops him weirdly. But usually he just goes straight through projectiles, completely ignores them. So it's a very good anti-zoning move. So if you're against a Toga, or maybe Todoroki's putting a lot of ice out, do this move, and you can go straight through them, and, uh, yeah, you know, punish them for trying to zone you out. So he has a lot of actually really good counter-zoning moves, like with this, which isn't a real zoning move, and he has this plus on block move, and he also has these charges. Here's some really good counter zoning, so you shouldn't really get um, zoned out that much with Hawks, which is a character type that I like. But uh, yeah, now that we've gone through all of his buttons, actually I'll quickly show his plus ultra one as well. It's a really good plus ultra one. It's um, very consistent, easily guaranteed off of any ground button. Yeah, you can only do it on the ground, by the way, which I thought was unusual, because you know, he's a flying character, I thought he'd be able to do it, he can't. But yeah, you can get it off of like, any hit on the ground, it's guaranteed the whole thing will hit. And with supports like Rafa, you can also combo off of it pretty easily. Oops. I don't know why that messed up there. It's usually pretty easy and consistent. So I didn't add a dash cancel in there, and that's going to be so pretty high damage, yeah. 15,000 without a dash cancel. If I added a dash cancel, it would have been like 17,000. So, really good damage if you extend off of his plus ultra one. But, um, yeah, okay, let's get into his combos. I know that's what a lot of people have been waiting for. So, um, a bread and butter combo, that, or the best combo that I've found with Hawks, like the most consistent but also high damaging. So two hits into yellow move, into Quark, quark 2, Quark 1, and um, I did not narrate all of that because I got lost. But 9,246 damage is pretty good. That's pretty, maybe slightly above the average damage, and it's pretty uh, consistent to get. So two hits, armor attack, tilt quark two, quark one, dash cancel, two hits, into yellow attack again, and into his quark two to finish it off. Pretty good damage. Obviously the damage will vary since there's so many multi-hits in there. If you don't let all the hits, all the hits hit, then you won't get the full damage. Um, you can extend it again with two dash cancels by doing basically the same thing except in the air. Um, oh yeah, another th uh, way you can mess it up really easily is, um, oh my god. Is if you cancel the quark Tilt Quark 2 too early, you'll actually cancel it before it hits the opponent. So you need to wait for it to hit the opponent before you cancel into the feathers. Oh, mistimed that. Damn it. Oh, okay, one more try. This is day one Hulk, so uh, don't judge my dropping combos. And there we go, that's going to be some pretty high damage. Yeah, 11,000, two dash cancels. Decent stuff, decent stuff. And um, that's basically the combo route that you're going to be doing most of the time. Um, like, off of your red attack, because it leaves you in the air. You're going to do a combo like that. 
Like this is just a single dash cancel, 9700, big damage um, off of just a stray red attack. And when you, after say like you've done something like off of this fly, and you've hit them with your, you know, as I said before, these as you fly around, he's quite gone as he flies. If you hit them with that, you get a combo. Oopsie, oops. Uh, yeah, you can get some com some damage off of that anyway. And yeah, so that's the basic combo route that you're often going to be using with Hawks. You can simplify it, like if it's a bit hard for you and you're um, not getting it consistently. You can go two hits into the fly. Um, or you can even go two hits into the yellow move, into the feathers, or just two hits into this, into the feathers. Whatever you want. Whatever makes it easier for you. But it can be a bit hard, especially after that, because they're too far away. So a lot of the time I'll, I'll recommend doing something like this. And you'll get a bit less damage, but it might be a bit more consistent for you. Yeah, so less damage, but more consistent. So whatever works. And, you know, on, in online conditions, lag makes it hard to do combos sometimes. Okay. Um, so with Hawks, he actually has really good, what I call, um, recovery resets, or recovery mix-ups in this game. And I did not just do it, because, um, I don't know, I failed. Okay, so, after you do his combo, like this, and if you end your combo in the tilt quad 2, and they recover, you can kind of get this reset if you just dash after them after they recover, and you can do this infinitely because they're recovering, and the damage doesn't get reset, and you can do that as much as you like, and if they keep recovering, that's guaranteed that they'll get hit by that. There's nothing they can do unless unless they know how to just guard, like, very consistently. If they recover, they're gonna get hit by your, like, addition 3000 onto your combo. Oops, I messed it up there. But if you're adding that onto the end of, what, that's like almost 8000, you're getting, like, an 11,000 damage combo from one dash cancel, and if they get hit by it twice, then it's 14,000, and... So if they're getting hit by that reset, they're losing a lot more damage than they should be. So, if, okay, wait. Let me, let me try and show it, so, two hits, into this. Okay, so they're here. And if I don't want to extend the combo, I can just do something like this. They've lost 5,000 damage. So if I've done, like, a decent combo and ended like that, so if I've just done my, like, basic 10,000 damage combo, and they get hit by the reset, all of a sudden it's a 15,000 damage combo, which is, like, really big damage in this game, just because they got hit by a recovery, mi um, uh, recovery mix-up, because they decided to recover. But where this is scary, and the reason it's actually a mix-up, is if they decide to not recover, if you've scared them out of doing recoveries because you've hit them like with that mix-up so many times, you keep looping them because they keep doing recoveries, he actually gets a combo loop-like thing on the ground. So if he does two hits into that, into his take part two, that's, he can actually get a combo with that, and that doesn't normally work, I'll just show you. If the opponent is recovering, this isn't a true combo, so it's not an infinite. Um, but yeah, if you've scared them away from recovering because of the resets I was showing before, you can actually get combos this way, and you can do it multiple times in one combo. So this adds some scary damage, oops, can be a bit hard to time. This adds some scary da- oh, damn it. <laughs> this adds a lot of scary damage to his combos. Oops. And, um, yeah, so even just that there, 8,400, before I did any, like, meter or anything, is a lot of damage for a, a meterless combo. And obviously, you can just do something like... Oops, okay. <laughs> It can be a little bit hard to try time, and I haven't practiced this beforehand. Okay, 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 I got this. But if you just end it, like, in a super simple combo... ...and end it with this... That was zero dash cancels, and I'm getting 10,000 damage. So that's a lot of damage just because you scared them away from doing recovery. And obviously, they're probably not going to get hit by that too many times. Or, if they know that they can recover out of that, they're gonna be like, Oh, okay, I'm gonna start recovering again now. But even if you just get one loop of this in your combo, that's adding a lot of damage- Oh my god. 
That's adding a lot of damage to your combos. And, you, and then if you do the real combo after you do the loop once... Oops. Uh, <laughs> Even if I just do one dash cancel, this is going to do a lot of damage for a single dash cancel. 10,600 is a lot of damage for Hawks, just because they got hit by that loop once. So that's a really big deal, at least in my books, um, when you're doing combos with Hawks. So a lot of the time, I don't actually end my combos properly, and I go for this, so that I can enforce the reset. They're like, if they recover, I will do resets in the air. If they don't recover, I'll do these resets on the ground. So that your the opponent is going to be kind of scared as to when they can recover and when they can't. So, yeah. I really like that kind of stuff. I like being able to mix the opponent up and get reward for it. And it's not an infinite, so it's a not annoying and broken. It's just, yeah, a genuine mix-up. If you guess right, then you get a lot more damage. Okay, um, another note on his combos is, um, Rafa, I found, is probably the best support for, um, playing with Hawks, because he's the easiest for comboing off of his plus ultra one, and off of his quirk two. Other supports can do it, but I've just found Rafa the most easy and consistent at doing it. Oops. Okay. I'm just going to take the opponent off of recovery so I can do things more easily. But say if I do a simple combo like... Oh, no, 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 I called him out too early. I'm just going to make sure I always have Rafa. Oops, the whoops. Okay, I'll do something like... I'm going to get Rafa to grab him. And keep in mind, this is zero dash cancels. I just did a red attack into a basic combo. 10,500 damage, zero dash cancels, just because I used a Rafa support. That's adding a lot of damage to his combos. And if I did the proper combo after that, that's adding a lot of damage to my combos. So, thanks, Rafa. Okay, that's not full damage, because I messed it up slightly. But... Like, 13,000, it probably would have been, like, a solid 13,000 if I didn't mess it up. That's good damage for a single dash cancel, guys. Like, that is definitely not something to complain about. And because I can connect Rapper off of his, um, Quirk 2 easily, um, basically any scenario when I would be using the Quirk 2, which is the end of, like, any combo, I can call out Rapper to extend it a bit more. So if I decide here I actually want to get a bit more damage, I call out Rapper and just extend it a bit more. So now my regular combo that does about like 9,000 damage, 9,000 a bit, is doing 11,000 in a bit. So you can add a lot more damage to the end of your combos if you have a Rafa support. And Rafa's also really good if I want to do a plus ultra combo. So if I do something like this, when he goes to do the big flourish at the end, I call out Rafa. He holds in there. And I didn't even need to do a dash cancel here, and this is going to do about 15,000 damage, which is a lot of damage for a single plus ultra combo. And it's not even anything fancy, like I could make it do a lot... I could make it a lot more intensive a combo, so if I do something like this... Whoops, come on. <laughs> uh, 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 no, no, no. And I do that kind of thing into my plus ultra one. This is going to be a high damaging combo. Fifteen thousand six hundred. Uh, just because you know, I did um uh, one of a single loop into it. So that wasn't any dash cancels. That was just a combo into my plus ultra one, and then used Rafa to extend it. Um, All Might can also be used, but it's just a little bit tighter, so I tend to use Rapper as much as possible. I know it isn't canon at all, but Rapper just makes it easy. Um, but yeah, it, even off of a combo that doesn't re rely on a reset, like... Um, and if I do a dash cancel after this... Whoa, 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 where are you going, Hawks? 
Uh, yeah, so basically, <laughs> Rafa's port is amazing for Hawks. I know, it's very sad, it's not canon at all. But he adds a lot of damage to his combo. See that 18,000 damage just because I did a dash cancel after a plus ultra combo with Rafa? That's some pretty crazy stuff. So yeah, that's... Combo-wise, that's basically all I have to say about Hawks. He has some really good mix-ups. He has... And like I was saying before, after you've like decided to end your combo, like maybe you've done your mix-ups and you just want to fully end your combo, make sure you're always putting out these Quirk 1 things. Because, you know, that's a lot great screen control. If they get hit by them, you can go in for a combo. Even though it does a bit less damage. You know, you're scaring the opponent and you want to make the opponent respect you. Um, so that you can go in and do your mix-ups and stuff, because Hawks can be pretty scary combo-wise. And I think that's the point of his character. If he gets his things going... He can get some high damaging combos, some really high damaging combos. And then after he does those combos, he still has his amazing screen control to boot. So he has his feather launches, he has his like swooping feathers that you have to respect, you can't be running around or else you're gonna get it let him have like guaranteed hit confirm. He's just a scary character that you really have to like respect and not just be going crazy when playing against. But yeah, that's basically all I have to say about Hawks. I'll show you his plus ultra two as we finish. I think you can actually Combo off of it this way. Yep, there we go. So that's going to be a lot of damage. But yeah, that's basically all I have to say about Hawks. I think he's a very well-rounded character. Um, I'm glad they didn't make him over-P... Over-P? <laughs> OP or overpowered, and he doesn't really have many exploits. But he's just a solid character that, like, excels from any range. So I think I'm going to have a lot of fun playing him, and I hope you do too. I think they've done a good job with their first DLC character, even though it took them a long time to release him for some reason. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, and but yeah, more Hawks gameplay will be coming. Online gameplay coming soon. Bye!